Welcome to The Mischief, I'm Valen and this is Astral Sorcery. Today we're going to be covering just about everything there is to do about finding all the stars, mantles of stars, observatories, iridescent altars, and more. So if you hadn't noticed, I've been doing a little decorating. Yes, I've been messing around with the lenses. These are not special things set up for the altar, no, it's just some spectral lenses underneath showing up through here, and then I've just got the other ones. They're just really colorful and really pretty, and I love them to death. They're, they're, they're great. The, the visuals <laughs> in Astral Sorcery are amazing. So let's get with the usual and start by opening your book. Today we're going to be covering the Radiance chapter. We're going to be covering the Iridescent Altar here. We're also going to be covering Containment Chalices, Mantles of the Stars, the Observatory, and Irradiant Stars. If you're interested in the Enhanced Attunement part, I'll be covering that in a future episode as well as the Ever-Shifting Fountain. So, let's get going with this, the Iridescent Altar. In a previous episode, uh, I started off with this and showed you kind of the like what it looks like, but I didn't actually explain how it works. It, to start with, it works the same as all the other altars. You basically have all the same number of squares in here and stuff. You actually have more in this one than you do in others. Plus, you have this extra slot on the side. Essentially, as I showed you before, I think we've got one in here. I've got uh, an attuned crystal. That's what these slots are for. You put in uh, any crystal that has been attuned, whether it be uh, you know, a rock crystal or a celestial one, whatever, and it will start showing a representation on the ground of what it looks like. And this, the only time that this is needed is in special recipes. Recipes that require attunement. And usually... These recipes are specified. Something like the Mantle of the Stars is going to be very specific for that. The Radiant Stars are going to be very specific for that. But we're going to get into how you can actually see more stars before you can actually start making those. So before we get into the observatory, let's actually do a Mantle of the Stars. Just a blank one. One that actually doesn't require anything specific here. One of these, like this. A Mantle of the Stars. It's really good armor. If you compare it with, let's say, a Diamond Chestplate. This is plus 8 armor and 2 toughness. This is 7 armor and 1.5 toughness. You think, well, why do I want this thing that, that's so much more difficult to make than just a bunch of ores that I could slap together on a crafting table? Well, they can come with special magical abilities that you would enhance. So let me grab a whole bunch of these, and we can actually try making one. So if I look up the recipe for this one here, it requires a whole bunch of things that we've already unlocked. And no, the crystal it uses does not have to be attuned or anything like that. It can just be a plain old rock crystal. And the properties of it do not make any difference. So you can just use your cheap ones, like your little size one throwaway slivers that you have. But you'll notice that in the crafting recipe for the iridescent altar here, it, it has some of these little outliers here. Well, this is this extra special thing besides the fact that it opens up an entire 5x5 five five crafting grid. So... If I try putting this in place, I can't because I don't have the, an appropriate crystal. Let me actually grab a crystal real quick. And there we go. I now have just a plain old rock crystal. See, it's not even attuned. And it says it'll create one of these. It's really awesome. You don't need to have one of these attuned crystals in here just to make the standard setup. It's for when you get more advanced than that, when you specialize this outfit. So what you're going to need to do, obviously, is going to tap it with your wand. Now, things that you should know about the layout for this is you don't want to put any relays on the black area that you're using to store things, like, like you know, your wand here that I just duplicated by accident. Uh, you don't want that on here. You're going to want to keep these empty for crafting. And you, can, you don't really need any more than eight in the current setup. Now, this may change. You might need more. But currently, uh, it doesn't matter. As long as it's on the black area, don't put it on top of the altar itself. It's kind of silly. Uh, but you, they should be recognized if they're in the sooty marble area of this entire altar setup. So if you've got about eight of them, you can have more or less, doesn't matter. Uh, but I think the biggest recipes I've seen involve eight. So that should work. Now let me grab this. We'll start this off. We're going to make ourselves one of these mantles. So at this point, the ritual has actually stalled because... Here, let me get rid of this here. It is looking for ingredients. Specifically, it's going to give a little ghost of what it's expecting in this case. It's just going to keep going. And the, the other advantage of the iridescent altar, besides it being very loud, is that <laughs> if you're crafting something at, like, say, just as dusk comes up and you don't have enough, uh, like, starlight in the altar, it will actually just pause 
and do what it's doing right now. Wait for a recipe ingredient or more starlight or whatever it may need until you have those completed or you start pulling out ingredients. One of the two. Now in this case, we need a star metal ingot. I have some on my hotbar. I will put it in here to match that. Now if you want to find out where it's telling you these things are, you can look up at the center here and it will show you these little shafts of light. Yeah, I know I've got a lot going on here, but it basically tells you I need something over here. Now if you want to put these in place beforehand, you can, but it's still going to end up saying I need these things in these specific places. So you're going to want to be aware of that. All right, next we need a feather. There we go. And is that it? I think it might be. Oh, nope, that's right. We need an ender pearl in this corner and that should finish it off. There we go. We now have a mantle of the stars, or at least another one, because I, I made a whole bunch of them. So <laughs> I'm even wearing one right now. Uh, so let's let's get into what we need to do with this thing. If you look up what this is, just by pressing U with the JEI uh, mod installed, it tells you the different uses on it. You can see that there's 12 different uses in here you can have with all the different crafting recipes to enhance it. But I recommend just looking in your book because it'll give you a lot easier of a time. Not in here though, because that's going to be confusing. It just tells you uh, some of the things that you can do with them, which are really handy, but you're really going to want to look on the constellations page. Each one of the constellations, minus the last four distant ones, which you probably have not been able to trace as of yet, will end up having special abilities. And that is what you'll end up needing to do with your Mantle of the Stars. So let's actually jump from that into something else. We're going to jump over to the observatory. Now the observatory uh, is a very large and expensive recipe. That's right, you can see here that there's, looks like, eight different ingredients floating around the outside. Don't forget to uh, have all of these on hand. You're also going to need these, plus you notice here that there is a symbol. I believe this is the symbol of Lucerna. This one right here, Lucerna. What that means is that you'll need to have some kind of crystal that has been attuned to Lucerna for the recipe. I'm not actually going to craft this. It's just representing that you need to have something on here that will have like that big C-shaped constellation in place for you to actually complete that crafting recipe. Once you have done so, you can then create this behemoth up here. I'm in creative, so let's actually go up here. Now this has two uses. One, to look amazing. And the other, <laughs> you actually end up using it. So let's let's go up here. I'm going to use my little... Uh, Astro Sorcery Elevator here works pretty good. It's it's a little slow, but it still works. Uh, so once you get up here, you'll notice there's a little seat. We've got this little spectacle area for the giant telescope. Yes, you can make observatories, but once again, just like the other telescopes and spyglasses and whatnot, you're going to want to make sure you've got a clear space around it or else it will end up showing you nothing. So you just right click it and automatically you can see all sorts of different things in the sky. You can see all the different tracings that you've got. There we go. I've got uh, Alcara here. This is one of the distant ones. Now if you want to actually uh, you know, trace these, you can just hold shift and you can trace them out like you normally would with you know other uh, you know stuff, other constellations and whatnot. There you go. I, I just traced it Alcara. Now I've already traced this one. You can see all the ones that are in the sky. It's not as, as intuitive as the telescope with the just click left or anything, but it is pretty good nonetheless. It will allow you to find those things. Now you notice I'm actually still in it. I hit escape to back out of this and I'm, I'm still in this thing. It's really cool. You, it actually changes height depending upon where you want to go. So if you really wanted to you know, mess around with how this thing looks, this is definitely one way you can go with it. To get back out, you just press sneak, just like you would if you're dismounting a horse or something like that. That's pretty much it for the observatory. It's going to allow you access to the four final constellations, Vorex, Jello, Alteria, and Alcara. Now these ones, they don't work like any of the other ones in every aspect. Like your, your basic ones, like you know the first five, you can actually attune yourself to. The uh, the next, uh, what is it, eight of them or something like that, you can then end up uh, attuning crystals and all sorts of stuff to these last four. Uh, these ones are going to add extra traits to things. 
Uh, essentially, if you look on here, it tells you a bit about it. You can use it in a ritual that will modify existing rituals. It doesn't it doesn't actually work where it has its own ritual. So it, it changes things. You can use it in a refraction table and get some fabulous enchants. Tell you what, and I don't just mean this one. I mean any of these ones here. Um, for example, I'm currently wearing uh, this Fire Protection 7, Blast Protection 7, Projectile Protection 7, and Protection 5. Uh, of course, one of those bonuses is because I've got a uh, Resplendent Prism. But seriously, it, it's, it's really impressive that you can put all of those different protections on your armor. <laughs> this one suddenly becomes a little more interesting than that plain old diamond armor, doesn't it? I also have this Infused Crystal Sword that has Mending, Smite 7, Bane of Arthropods 7, and Sharpness 7. And by default, it does at least 20.84 attack damage, but I found that it was doing around 27 after it took all of my different effects and perks and abilities in, into place. And that was just for a regular hit, not even a critical. So, yeah, the, these finding the last constellations can really be important. And if you do have a question about Horologium, it shows up once every 36 days. If you see a, uh, an eclipse of the sun in the sky... That's really where you're going to be able to find that one. But I'll cover that one more in a different episode. So now that we've covered the observatory a bit and how you can use it to find a lot of the uh, missing constellations, as well as potentially find those that are a little more interesting, and I do recommend that you use the telescope to find Horologium if you want, if only because you can just, you know, kind of right-click through it if you weren't around or above ground during the day to see if it's there. Uh, but otherwise, we're going to cover the Radiant Stars. These are really, really cool. These allow you to keep all of your perk XP. Remember remember these? All the different perks that you've got? I've got like 28 levels worth, and it, it's amazing. I, I no longer need to eat food. Um, I, I get haste, and my Starlight Recharge is really fast. I've got two gem sockets. I also have automatic step assist. I've got a whole bunch of benefits that give me speed boosts and increased attack speed and all sorts of crazy stuff. But let's say I didn't want to actually do this or I started clicking in the wrong direction. I started going over here towards vampirism when instead I wanted spectral thread. I wanted more starlight regeneration. Uh, it keeps running out during the day and it's I'm, oh, it's killing me. I, I can't take it anymore. I don't care about this vampirism thing. I want to go towards that. Okay, well, there's two ways of going. <laughs> In the past, I have shown you shifting stars, which um, they can be used, but it'll wipe out all of your current existence, or, or, all of your current XP. If we go with an irradiant star, on the other hand, that's going to work a lot better. Now, I'm already attuned to Visio, but let's say that I want to attune to Dissidia instead. That's not a problem. I can actually make one of these on the iridescent altar with this setup. As, and as before, you've got a whole bunch of these outliers that you'll, you'll need to manually place in order for those to work properly. And then there you go. We've, you, you take a shifting star and you make it a little bit better with uh, as an irradiant star. Now, what happens, because this is a Dissidia irradiant star, you will therefore end up, when you hold it like a bow, all of your XP will stay there. But the light subtly shifts. When you go back into your Astral Tome and check out your perks, you will no longer be attuned to that one that you were at before. You will now be attuned to a new one. Now, if I were to have chosen Visio, it would have allowed me to just start here again, and then I could branch back out with exactly the same number of points I had and XP that I had before which now this allows me to just kind of go crazy. I can start boosting up my XP and, uh, and all this and just go nuts. And I was testing things out, and I was able to crit critical hit some, some uh, skeleton mobs for over 100 hearts or 100 damage. <laughs> it was, it's ridiculous when you really focus in on these kind of tra uh, traits. But yeah, these are really good for just, you know, re respecking yourself at a whim it might even be that you were getting so it was taking so much effort that you decided that instead of trying to spec yourself out with useful abilities you wanted to spec yourself out to gain as much xp as possible so that you could just level yourself a whole bunch really quick depending upon each one you wanted to do and therefore instead of attacking enemies with dissidia you wanted to break blocks or even place blocks uh you know 
exactly. Uh, oh, yeah, by building things. Or you just wanted to fly around and uh, have fun with it instead. Uh, or you could just take damage. But anyway, let's move on to the next bit. Containment Chalice. These are really, really cool and unique. Uh, let me get over here. All right, I've got quite the setup going on for these. So, today, this is going to be a little bit more in-depth than I, I think I had planned on going into for this one. I was considering it its own episode, but, well, here we are, and you're going to get it regardless. Keep in mind, I have another mod in here by the name of Fluid Tank that is allowing me to use pipes for demonstration purposes. Now, a containment chalice is... An item here that is made relatively cheaply. You've got some aquamarines on the outside, so obviously you could just fill a whole bunch of aquamarines in your empty spots, and it would actually take them. You you could prep that ahead of time instead of waiting for them to uh, prompt you for it. But there you go. You get your uh, containment chalice. And what does this do? These are good for storing fluids. Essentially, you can place it down and take a bucket of any random liquid, minus milk, because I don't think that uh, milk is actually represented in the world of Minecraft, but primarily, Starlight is going to be your best bet. It will then hold a lot of buckets of this stuff. I'm just filling and filling and filling and filling. I think it's somewhere around 40 buckets or something like that. But it will continue getting larger and larger until you can see, you know, it, it's, it's pretty darn big. And it will hold the different fluids. Now, you can actually pipe into and out of the bottom of, this, uh, of these structures here. So this, the red, represents an arrow. These are both going down. Now, if I were to take something, let's say magma block, toss that in there, and I get myself some ice, and I put that in there, both of these are going to start letting off their respective liquids, water, lava. Well, if I have this so that it will actually go out, if I have this so that it will actually go out, let's try that again. There we go it will start filling into a containment chalice. Now, it also wants to go this way too, but due to the way that these pipes work, it is prioritizing the uh, containment chalice first. Same thing with this one. If I choose here, it will start going with... Let's actually change that. There we go. Water will start going in place here. And you'll start noticing something's happening. What's going on? Well, this is part of the reaction that can happen with containment chalices. I'm actually going to uh, kind of stop this in this case. There we go. <laughs> so that I can better illustrate what is happening. These are actually uh, machines as well. They are storage ability, they have a, a liquid storage ability, and they can be used to automate the creation of certain items. Remember before we had a sand generator? Well, you've got another one now. In this case, if you have redstone signals uh, up against the uh, containment chalice, then it will actually turn off the ability for it to interact with other things. Now, by default, if you have a containment chalice with, um, let's see, a light, there we go, a light well nearby, and something that will generate uh, liquid starlight in it, it will automatically start pulling starlight from that into itself. As you can see here, it's actually starting to generate and grab the starlight from the light well into here. It will not do this with water or magma. It is only, or lava rather, it, it is only for, it only does this for starlight. But that aside, we have other things that these can be used for. So if I turn on this lever here, that means that water, this water chalice can now interact with others, but these are both turned off. So I have to turn something else on. Turn this on and it is going to start pulling light, well, a liquid starlight from there and over time, it will start interacting and making ice cubes once it's done gra grabbing some of that stuff. Now, again, I can turn that off. I can turn this on, and it will start making sand. Pretty good. And you also, I believe, still have a chance of also making uh, your usual, like, aquamarine and stuff like that. And then, of course, you can always do good old water and lava and make yourself some stone with the occasional smooth stone as, a, you know, an, an off put as well. So that's just really, really cool. The fact that you can pipe in and out from the bottom of them. You can also redstone them so that you can turn them on and off. They're also going to be uh, kind of batteries for uh, later magical machines. And just to give an example, there you go. We now have a whole bunch of these that are interacted with stuff. And I turn on, let's say, lava. You can start seeing that it's going to have a lot of 
progress being made with this. And as before, you can just turn it off and everything will stop. There we go. Look at that. We even got some aquamarine shale. And there you have it, my friends, the close of another episode. I hope you've enjoyed this bit by bit. If so, be sure to give a like, comment, subscribe, and as always, come visit us on Twitch. Don't be afraid to spread the mischief and click that notification bell. Until next time, folks, I'll see you. Bye.